Thank you everyone for joining. Today we are going to go deep dive into one note and see how it can help us manage all kinds of notes we have. Now in order to do that, I am assuming all of you have one note. If you don't have, don't worry. I will explain how to get it, which version to install and all the details. Now this is going to be obviously a live demo of most of the features, so I'm going to switch off the video and you can focus on the content. If you have connected to this live event using a mobile, try to go to a desktop or a laptop because then you can appreciate the demos much better. So let me reset the video and get started. I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions and because this is a live event, you can't really ask questions by unmuting, but no problem. You can ask questions using the Q&A panel. Where is the Q&A panel? Whether it is mobile or laptop, the Q&A panel is available to all of you. You will see a question mark kind of button and then you can put your question. I will try to answer all the questions. We have a hard stop at 90 minutes. In case some questions get unanswered, make sure you put your name there so that I can answer them later. You will get a video recording of the entire session and you're free to share it with your colleagues and friends. So with that, let's get started. What is OneNote? It is a software for capturing notes. Easy, nothing difficult at all, but you will see there are so many different applications for capturing notes. Agreed. So the purpose of today's session is why it makes sense to use OneNote in preference to everything else which you may know. There are people who use OneNote, but they may not be using it all the time. So how you can make OneNote your single place for taking all kinds of notes? That's the idea. Before we go into that, a couple of things. All of us use Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, but we may not be using it in the most efficient way. So what is exactly inefficiency? Inefficiency means the job is getting done, but with extra effort from your side. If you knew the correct or optimal way of doing it, you would have saved that time and you could have used that time. Somewhere else, so that's the idea. We have to have a mindset which is efficient. What do I mean by that? Efficient mindset means whatever I'm doing should be efficient, but who is going to tell you that in order to understand what is efficient? First, you have to understand what is inefficient and quickly what is inefficiency? I'll give you three simple methods of detecting your own inefficiency, not just in the context of one note, but practically every software. So one thing is if you are doing something repetitively, for example, here we all the time do find next, find next to find a particular spot in word that's inefficient because it's repetitive. There has to be a better way. The other thing to think of is. There is an imbalance between hands and brain means hands are busy doing something. Brain is idle. That means the process must be inefficient and there must be a better way. And the third is at no point you should be helping the software. So we use these things every day, but it's not our job to help Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneNote. It's their job. OK, very simple concepts. As we go along, you'll understand. Now how to find the efficient way? That's another next obvious question. There are also two very, very simple methods. How do you find the efficient way? Very easy there itself. Think what is the problem? It's a localized problem. Then right click and look at the menus in the right click options. Most probably the answer you need will be there. And if it's a bigger global problem, then some menu on the top, which is called a ribbon. You have to figure out which menu should I go to by simple common sense and then look at all the buttons and you will find the answer. So with that, let's look at what one note has to offer. It is a software for taking notes. Agreed. So. 
in between Microsoft had discontinued OneNote for whatever reason, but they have reinstated it. So how do you install OneNote? So just go to OneNote.com and install it. OneNote is completely free for life. You don't need any other Office subscription also if you just want to use OneNote. So OneNote is available in multiple versions. One is on desktop, which probably all of you should already have. Some IT people remove OneNote because nobody is using it. So if you're from IT, please install it. It is a part of normal Office 365 install now, but there is another variation of it, which is OneNote Windows 10 application. And many cases, both the desktop and Windows 10 are installed on the same PC, which is OK. I use both. Why do I need to use both? Because there are some features which are there only on desktop, some which are on Windows 10. If you have a choice, then what are you going to do? Use the Windows 10 version because that is the one which is under development. Desktop version, whatever features are there, they will continue to be there, but further development has stopped for the desktop version. In today's session, I'm going to use both. So how will you know which one I'm using? So very simple. When I show any OneNote demo, if you see something which is this kind of look and feel, this is the desktop version. And if you see this dark mode kind of thing, then it's the Windows 10 version. Of course, it's shown in the title bar as well. And on iOS as well as iPad and Android, there are versions on all of the mobile platforms. Now in either case, what do you do? When you install one note, there is one notebook, but don't use that. That is just, uh, help file in the form of OneNote. So leave it alone, read it, understand it, that's fine. But you should create more notebooks. How do you create more notebooks? Very easy. You go to File, New and Create Notebooks. Now remember, always create notebooks on cloud, typically OneDrive. Why is that important? Because as soon as you create the notebook, once you create it on OneDrive, it will be available on all your devices where you have logged in using the same OneDrive account. If you create one note on local disk, obviously it is not going to sync with anything else. And if local drive fails, you have no backup. So having created a one note notebook, what do we have inside? Remember, many people still like paper and I'm not against paper. I also use paper to take notes even today. So when I say use one note, I'm not saying don't use paper. You can use both together, but if you Purely look at the advantage of OneNote over any paper based system, diary, notepad, sheaves of paper, whatever. What is the difference? Practically, you can carry only one notepad or one diary at a time. And then what happens? Whenever there is a new meeting, you turn the page. And then different meetings, different department, different projects, all those get mixed up in the same notepad. Whereas in OneNote, you can create as many notebooks as you want and carry all of them together, even on a mobile. So then when you are adding a new page, you are adding it in the correct notebook and avoiding that mix up which happens on paper. Technically, you may have an organizer diary, yes, but even there is a limit to how many tabs you can insert in the organizer diary. So what is there in a notebook? This is one notebook. Top left shows you the notebook name. This is the desktop version. If you go to the Windows 10 version, where will you see this? So if you open this, you will see the name of the notebook. These are the sections. These are topics or sections. And in each section, we have pages. So notebook, section or topics and pages. How many notebooks can I create? How many sections, how many pages? There is absolutely no limit. There is another thing which has no limit. The page size itself is like a web page. There is no horizontal width limit. There is no vertical height limit. It just keeps on extending as you start typing or providing content. Fine. So understand this concept. So many people create just one notebook and stuff everything by putting topics. Don't do that. How many notebooks to create? I can't tell you that. That's up to you. But exactly how many you will have to decide. So how do you decide that? Question is, how many notebooks are relevant and useful for me as a person? Now you yourself 
may not have that answer, but I will tell you how to reach that. First of all, when you are learning OneNote, create a separate notebook called learning so that you don't mix it up with anything else. Now, from business point of view or work point of view or learning point of view or whatever your job is, how many notebooks to create? So I'll give you some examples and then you figure it out yourself. Examples, suppose you are from HR and you are handling recruitment. So you create a notebook for HR then create a section called recruitment and every page can become the position which is open or maybe you are from HR, but you are handling recruitment and performance management which have nothing to do with each other. So then you create one separate notebook for recruitment, one for performance management like that. Now you are a project manager and you are handling three large projects. Then what do you do? One notebook for each project. And within that project, you can have modules and pages. Similarly, you are the boss and you are handling five different meetings or different reviews across different subdivisions which report to you. So each unit of distinct activity should be a notebook. How many? You figure out. So that's that. Now let's see how to use this one note notebook. First, very simple stuff, and then we'll go to equally simple but more sophisticated stuff. So when you start a new page, it has a blank thing here. So this is the title of the page and date and time comes automatically. Fair enough. Now you can just type or you can copy paste or you can insert. So if you go to insert, for example, we have many things, tables, files and so on. Links, audio, we will cover all these, but basically OneNote is a universal container. You can practically put anything there. And even if you just copy paste, it has some extra things. We will see those. Now there is a myth that for OneNote to be used properly, we need a stylus. That is not required. If there is a stylus, it does become more convenient, but that is absolutely not required. Even if you don't have a stylus, you can use a mouse to draw or there is a button here which says draw with mouse or touch. So you can even use the finger to write and this is very useful on mobile because everyone doesn't have a stylus on mobile, but all mobiles have touch screen. So you can literally scribble your notes using the finger. Use it in landscape mode so it's easier to manage. Now, when we do anything here, one important thing to understand is saving. So if you go to home tab, you will, you will see there is no save button. The same thing applies to desktop version. I have in this is a desktop version. I am typing something and if I go to file save, there is no file save at all. Why? Because it's auto save. Now someone has asked a question. Where do these files get saved? SJ has asked that question. So ideally we should store the files on OneDrive. The question is, yes, I do store it on OneDrive, in which case it will go into a folder in OneDrive called notebooks. But if you created a notebook from here and then said create new in OneDrive and I gave it a name from here, what will happen? It will get created in OneDrive, of course, and by default in the OneNote or other notebooks area. You can put it in another folder if you like, but better to put it in the default one. The moment you create it on OneNote, it will automatically sync to local drive as well. Now, where is it stored in local drive? It is under documents, OneNote notebooks, and they get synced. If the laptop changes or your laptop fails or it is stolen, you buy a new laptop, log in using the same OneDrive ID, log into OneNote, OneNote will talk to OneDrive and sync it. No questions asked. So that's automatic backup and restore. All right, now, when will you typically use this? We will use it not just for meetings. Of course, the common, commonest use or commonest reason why people take notes anywhere in the world is meetings, and we are doing too many of them nowadays. So meetings is obviously one of the commonest requirements, but 
That's just one part of it. So think of it this way. What are the most common products we use in life? Of course, office, but within office what? So if I just show you the icons, you will know and you already use them. There is nothing new I'm going to show, but just to put this in context, what am I trying to say? Formal documents get created in Word, spreadsheets get created in here, presentations here, emails and communication here, Teams is for meetings, chat and collaboration. So anything which doesn't belong to these, but you need to capture it. Where will you put it? Because we didn't have any other container, even if it didn't belong to Excel or Word or PowerPoint, we had no choice but to put it there. Many a times when people just want to capture something, they don't know what to do. Nothing else is available. This they just put it in an email and send a mail to themselves. So bottom line, if it's a formal document, continue to use Word, Excel, PowerPoint. If it is not formal or you not yet formalized, or maybe it will remain lifelong informal, but you need to capture it. Those kind of things should go on one note. Now you will say I use Evernote, I use sticky notes, I use X notes, Y notes, Z notes. Agreed. All note applications allow you to quickly create a page and dump something there and auto save. From that point of view, one note is same. Purely for that purpose, there is no differentiator, but as you will understand what else OneNote can do, it's not just an isolated software like XYZ or ABC. It is designed to integrate with all these things. So that integration is what is important. So purely from a stylus based handwritten notes or just sticky notes which come with Android iOS native apps may not be much difference, but the moment you say what else can I do after taking the notes, then there is no comparison practically. So with that in mind, anything which needs to be captured goes into one note. Now pictures, you may want to capture pictures of something. You can put them on one note because one note mobile allows you to take a picture. One note in desktop also allows you to picture if it is a Windows 10 app, the desktop app of OneNote does not allow you to insert a picture directly from camera. But if I have this notebook which is synced with my mobile and on mobile I added a page and put a picture, it will sync anyway, so not to worry. So that's about inserting things in OneNote. Now let's talk about uh, the most common things we do, which is taking notes in a meeting. When it comes to taking notes in a meeting, we have to think now where do we regularly capture notes? And that is not a single answer, unfortunately. I ask this question and I have been asking this question for years or decades, for example, for that matter, but the answers are always variable. Why is that so? Because everyone is used to taking notes in their comfort zone, whatever that might be. And that generally is decided on circumstances as well as the products you use. But broadly, whoever you are, you must be using one of these methods. Either you like your mobile or you like your desktop or you are using paper. It's not the question of whether you are carrying the desktop or mobile, by the way. In many cases, what happens? People carry all of them. Yes, what did I just say? People actually carry all of them. And then if I have a choice, amongst all three, then which one will I use? So finally, it is still dependent on what? It is dependent on your preferences. So I have seen people taking notes in Notepad, WordPad, or even Excel, even PowerPoint notes area, all kinds of things, or were emails and send the mail to themselves. Mobile again, we have multiple apps. So that what I'm saying is, doesn't matter what you are currently using to take notes. The real question is wherever you are capturing those notes, can you find them after a few months? Because the meeting you will find in the calendar easily. Can you find the notes easily? Because they have nothing to do with the meeting. When you captured notes, it, they were either in Word or some sticky notes in notepad or paper or diary. So that's the problem. That's called inefficiency. So this is a very useful thing to learn. How do you link notes to meetings irrespective of whether you use mobile or laptop or paper? That covers all scenarios in the world. 
So let's see. The first thing is we want to link meetings to notes, so we have to go where meetings are. So here is my calendar and there is a meeting here. What does a typical meeting contain a meeting request? It contains few things. It is going to contain list of people whom I have invited. There will be an agenda. There may be some collaterals and so on. All right, so meeting is already there. All that you have to do. Remember what I said a local problem right click. So right click here and you will see meeting notes. So click on meeting notes. It will ask you. Do you want to have notes for yourself or others for the time being my own? Now remember we have multiple notebooks. Outlook doesn't know this particular meeting is relevant for which. Notebook or project or topic or area of interest. So it will give you a list of one note notebooks which are available currently. It will also show the current notebook and current section if you want, but generally it's a good idea to choose the correct notebook depending on what this meeting is for. So I'm going to put it there. Now the moment I do that, notice what happened. It didn't just give me a blank page. Just to remind you, if you go to any sticky notes software on mobile or any kind of note taking app, when you say new, it gives you a blank page. Even on laptop, you go to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, whatever, they will give you a blank document. Paper is obviously blank. So when you are writing notes about a meeting, you have to put extra effort to mention which meeting this is. That part is already solved. How is that so? Because it did not give you a blank page. It gives you all the details about the meeting. You can expand and collapse the agenda also. You can expand and collapse the collaterals. In this case, there is only one and the attendees. Now remember, it's not just dumb list of attendees. What is it showing you? It's showing you many things. First of all, it's showing you a checkbox. That's not just a checkbox. That's a special icon which says in attend pin person attendance tag. Why is that important? Because after six months, you're not going to remember who exactly attended the meeting. So maybe it's a good idea to say these guys attended, but boss actually didn't attend. Now suppose you want to chat with boss during the meeting. What happens here? The presence tag comes and depending on the kind of integration you have, I can chat with my boss or whoever is missing and get some inputs. Very nice. Now of course I will take my notes here. So let's finish this part and then go into details of the notes. So that. now I have finished taking notes and just to make sure these are unique notes, just remember this number 7865. When I finish taking notes, I have no extra effort to do. Unlike in Word or Excel where I have to save that file, think of a folder, think of a file name. Or on paper where I have to make sure that notepad is not lost. Here I just close or ignore it. Now what happens next time? That's important. Whatever number of months have passed and now you need to refer to those notes. Obviously you can go to OneNote and search. OneNote does have search, a quite a powerful kind of search. So if I go to OneNote and say notes, notice it's searching across what it is searching across all my notebooks. I can change that to this notebook and whatever granularity I want, but very rarely will you remember a unique word to search for to identify a meeting. So don't bother. Don't go to one note. Go to calendar. Even if many months have passed, it is easier to find that meeting in the calendar. So go there and then right click and again click on the same button. The button is the same, but now OneNote already knows. There is a link between OneNote notes and Outlook and it is available both ways. So Outlook knows exactly how to talk to OneNote and open that page for you. Now remember this ability to right click on a meeting request or a meeting calendar entry and connect it to OneNote is available only on the desktop version, not on the mobile version. So what happens then if I have used mobile to capture notes? There I'm going to add a blank page and take notes. Now this linkage is not going to work. 
correct. It is not going to work at that point of time. So let's see what happens there. So suppose I have taken notes on the mobile. Of course, I have added a page, right? So that page will happen here. The page will get synced anyway. Whenever you connect to the desktop or laptop, when you are actually capturing the notes on mobile, that was off. Doesn't matter. Eventually you'll switch it on. The page will link. So the page will sync. So these were the notes I have taken on mobile. Now what I want to do is retrospectively, I want to go and connect these to a meeting which essentially has already happened because I have already taken the notes. That means the meeting is over. Now what do I do? So obviously that is also thought of. You have this page with notes with no linkage whatsoever to the meeting. So go to the home tab and say meeting details and it will actually show you all the meetings currently available to you. You can of course choose another meeting. Maybe it happened yesterday. No problem. I am going to go and say OK this one. This is the meeting Then I say continue adding and now retrospectively this is linked to that meeting and all the details have come in. End of story. So that takes care of more notes taken on mobile. They are also linked. Now the paper. What happens if I have taken notes on paper? That's an important thing to understand. Yeah, so this can be a situation where you have paper or you are using some software like Santosh is saying, whatever notes he's taking are practically stored as images in some software or the other. In this case, if I'm capturing notes on paper, there is no image at all. It's physical paper, pencil, pen. In that case, what do you do? Oh, not, not a problem at all. You still have your one note on that mobile and you have the mobile when you're writing notes on paper, right? So what do you do? After you finish taking notes on whatever paper you have, you start your mobile app on one note, add a new page, take a picture, and then that page will obviously sync to your desktop. And on the desktop, you already know how to link it by adding meeting details. In short, whichever method you use to capture notes, now there is no excuse to say, I can't find my notes. All right, Shesham, yes, are there any questions I should handle right now? Or should it, can we wait? Can these questions wait till the end? We can wait till the end. All right. So now let's uh, look at in a greater detail. What can we do during capturing of notes? Now many of us due to Teams, Zoom and recent explosion of meetings are very used to meeting recordings. But OneNote has been having a method of recording meetings for years and many of us did not know that at all. What do I mean by that? I mean when I go to insert, there is audio option here. This is available on desktop as well as here, audio. On desktop, you can include video as well, which will use your webcam. Here, only this audio. Now, what happens because of that? When I start recording, I don't have to do anything special. It will take the default audio and all that, the mic. You should test it once, and it just starts the recording. This has nothing to do with Teams or Zoom. Now, if it's an online meeting, it's a problem. Why? Because only your audio is going to get recorded. What people are discussing with you will not get recorded by default because their system audio does not go into your microphone. That's automatically canceled. So if you are on an online meeting and you want to record your voice as well as what others are saying, then it's a little tricky. It's not that there is no solution, but it requires you to have a virtual VB cable. For those who are technically minded, just download this. This is a free software and it then allows you to feed the line in also to mic without echo. But this was more designed for in person meetings. Anyway, now once the recording is done, what will happen? It will tell you how long the recording is and when you stop it, it just stops. Where does the file go? It goes in the same folder. It gets synchronized with uh, one drive and all that. Now what happens? 
Why did we take audio recording? How often do you look at uh, the video, look or hear the meeting recording afterwards? It's not a very enjoyable experience. Who wants to hear three hours of boring meeting again? Why would you do that? The most common reasons you may want to refer back not to the meeting notes, but to the audio is there is something in the audio which is not there in the notes because practically it's impossible to capture everything. So now what is the problem going to be? The problem is going to be I have taken notes and I have some recording. This is a 20 minute recording, but maybe it could have been bigger, longer. Either way, I'm not intending to play from beginning till the end and hear the entire 19 minutes. The reason I have gone here is either I have forgotten something and I need that information or there is a dispute. For example, here is written total cost is 350,000 and now the vendor is saying no, no, it was 450,000. So I need the voice of that person saying no, you said this. So evidence. Now in either case, what is going to happen is if I play, how do I know where exactly in these 20 minutes or three hours this was spoken? So this play button does not seem to have practical use. That's not the case. This play button is not useful in the current situation or current use case. There is a purpose. We'll see that later. So what do I do now? I ideally I want to play from exactly the point in time during that long meeting where the cost was being discussed. So right now I need a play button next to the cost and that is available. So if you go to any item which you have written, it will have a play button next to it. So now carefully look at this. This is at zero zero. And when I click on play, probably you can't see it. Let me change the. Theme to white then it will be clear. OK, now you can see zero zero. So when I click on play, this what happens. I jump to that point in time. In fact, it goes that that point rewinds five seconds so that there is a better context and then does that. So depending on where you clicked, it already remembers the point in time and that is called linking audio to notes and exactly the same thing which happens for video. This is a brilliant feature which has absolutely not been noticed by the humanity and now that you know it, you can use it to your advantage, but not necessarily immediately because most of the meetings are online. Anyway, will you get a transcript out of the audio? No. With video also, will it link? Yes. Now, one more unrelated feature. Many people have been asking me, how do I translate or convert my voice into transcript? So if you have the latest version of Teams, which is coming probably getting rolled out this month, you have a direct transcript option where whatever people are saying will appear as a transcript and that can be downloaded. So that's minutes of meeting. But even if you don't have that right now and many people do want minutes of meeting and they don't have minutes of meeting, but they have a meeting recording in teams. So how do you do that? Although it's not directly a one note topic, it's relevant. So I'm going to show you that part quickly. So in a meeting recording, I'm talking about teams right now. In a teams meeting recording, first of all, where does the meeting recording appear? Many meeting apps allow you recording. Zoom allows, Webex allows, XYZ, ABC, everyone allows. But in teams, the recording appears in the chat. Remember in teams, after you attend every meeting, the meeting may get finished, but the meeting context continues by adding that meeting to chat. So you can continue interacting with the exactly same meeting participants without trying to find their names and sending them CCs. So the meeting recording is started during the meeting. Of course, only presenters and organizers can do it, but once it is available, it will appear in the chat, the corresponding meeting chat. If it was a part of a proper team with a channel, then it will appear in the channel. In either case, it will be a thumbnail and this will be an audio video recording MP4 format. By default, it does not give you minutes of meeting in transcribed form, but it is possible. So someone who has access to stream, which is typically the organizer, 
has to click on the three dots here and say open in stream. Unlike Zoom, where you have a choice whether it's local recording, Zoom recording, cloud recording, all complexity here, it automatically goes to stream because stream is a built in streaming server. Now when you open it there, you have to go to properties of that video and set the language. In this case, I have set it to English. But technically these languages are supported for automatic transcription. And once that is done, after a little while of delay, the transcript will be ready and this transcript can be downloaded and then converted to a formal minutes of meeting. So this is automatic minutes of meeting. This transcript is also searchable and if you have many of your meetings, you can search in the text which was actually spoken words across all meetings. So if you want to know across all meetings, how many times the word discount was uttered, you can actually do that. To do that, go to stream, go to my meetings. Don't go inside a particular meeting. Just list all the meetings and you can search across meetings as well. So that's about that part. Now coming back to this. Other than this, what is the most common thing we do in uh, meetings? During a meeting, we take notes. And uh, what happens when we take notes? For example, this was the meeting I have just linked. I have taken notes. At the end of the meeting, the most common thing I will need to do is to send these notes to someone. So this is already thought of. Go to home tab. This is a bigger problem. Bigger problem means menu on the top. And there you will have a nice convenient button here saying email the page. The question is to whom? That question is already answered because this page of notes is already linked to the meeting and it knows who the people are. So it's just going to create a nice email, not a blank email with people in it and the attachment which was a collateral for the meeting as well and your notes as well. So that's called efficiency. 18 years this is available. Anyway, now going further. One of the most common things we do during a meeting which has bearing on what happens after the meeting is action points. Now again, there is a very slow, a large amount of. A large amount of variability about. Where people put their note uh, action points and as I've already told you, if you randomly put action points wherever you feel like you may think you are doing something which you like. Maybe that is the case, but you have not done a comprehensive uh, study of what is the ideal place to store your action points. So to cut a long story short, having your action points scattered all over the place is against your life because where is the list of your pending word itself is a list. And then when it comes to planning when to do what, you will need to prioritize sort filter which you can't do. So ideally we should put all our action points, whether personal professional doesn't matter in one place. And the best place for that is Outlook task folder. So anything which you have decided to execute, it could be a small big work doesn't matter. Official personal doesn't matter. You have to put it in one master list. How do you do that? You go to Outlook task folder and just a word of caution. You go to Outlook task. What it shows you by default is not Outlook task folder. It shows you to do list. The second one is the task folder. So here you go and do whatever you want. So now I'm going to group them arrange by. Whatever I like, so this is my master list now. Now because this is my master list, what is going to happen here? All my tasks are now suddenly and easily available to me in one place so that I can sort filter prioritize. So that's a quick digression to take step number one. All tasks in one place. You can also use color categories like this to make sure what is happening here is based on. Based on. Different kinds of. Color coding which you can use. How many colors you can use? You can use up to 25 colors. 
each color can be given a custom name depending on what you are trying to do. So that's how this is. Now what happens? Once you are taking notes in one note, ideally action points during meeting should also appear in your task list because eventually you are going to do it. Now some of that work you may be doing, some of that work may be done, may be done. Some of that work may be done by someone else, so there may be some work for yourself and some work for delegation either way. Now that brings another topic. What is the way you delegate work? That's another digression we need to do in order to understand how to use Outlook properly. So or OneNote properly. So when you want to delegate work, typically we send mails to people and that's a problem because once the mail is gone, you have no way of monitoring how many tasks you have delegated to whom and then we create an Excel file. So the correct way of doing that is not to go to Outlook and send a mail for a delegation, you still go to the task folder and create a task from here. This is the short way of adding a task, add the task, put due date. Here is a more comprehensive way of adding the task. Why am I asking you to go here? Because here it gives you a special button called assign task. And once that is done, it will ask you whom do you want to assign it to? This two box will come only when you click on the assign button. And then what happens? The other party is going to get it as a task request instead of just a mail. But even then that person may not act on it and things may get delayed. The difference is if you had sent this as a mail, you may forget the other party forgets, both forget. In this case, even if the other party sleeps over it, you will not forget because it is also becoming a task in your task folder. Now, how do you differentiate my work versus delegated work? That's where this icon helps you visually. This is my work. This is delegated work. Yes, it is getting mixed up, but at least in one place you know what is happening. So now what happens on the other side when the other party receives this task delegation? They will be able to see it. They will be able to see it with accept decline buttons and the entire workflow is built in. What do I mean by that? You assign task to someone, they will accept it, it will become a task, they update it. Your task, which is equivalent in your task folder, will also be managed. Now the only small problem which remains is my task list is now having two types of tasks. What are the two types of tasks my task list has? One is my work and one is delegated work. So when I'm monitoring what has happened to my delegated work, that is going to be confusing. So how do I manage that? So remember in Outlook or in all other products, everything you want has already been thought of. So now if I go to my task list, and it has mixed up version of my work and others work or delegated work. How do I filter this only on delegated work? And even if I do that, I can't see who is the person responsible. So the solution to that in Outlook is to go to task folder, go to the view tab and change the view to a special view called assigned view. Why is that an important view? Because once you go to the assigned view, you will get exactly what you want to monitor the work. So when you go to assigned view, it filters out only the delegated work and gives you grouped or grouping by person. So at a glance, you can see what is pending with whom. Ah, now with all this knowledge, let's see how to capture notes during a meeting, assuming you are using one note. So now I'm going to capture some action point. So let's say I have to do something based on what was discussed in the meeting. So this is my task. I want to create some notebooks for projects. This is not looking like a task and many people use this. This is not a task. This is a check box. So when do you use this? When you need a checklist. This does not have a deadline. This does have an empty box and a finished box, but no deadline. So this is not a task. This is a checkbox. Now what I really want to do is this. I want to right click local problem. Remember now read all the buttons and find the answer. 
or read all the options rather. When I say this and even if there was enough time, people read all these and they forget this guy. So what you are interested in is this outlook task and here itself it asks you when is this what they are you trying to do and so on. So I can say OK, I will do this tomorrow and obviously what is going to happen? This one note will talk to outlook and add the task there. And when you mark that task as complete in Outlook, this also will be marked as complete. Now, second thing, while I'm adding the task, if this is a task worth delegating, then what do I do? I can right click, I can click here and say do this, but then it becomes my task. After the meeting, I don't want to go to Outlook, open that task and say delegate. So I can do it from here itself by going to custom. Now it doesn't do anything automatically. It opens the task window and there we have the assigned task button and then I can delegate it to someone. The only extra effort you have to put is to put a due date. So let's say four days done and now I just delegated work. Added it to my task folder, made sure I'm going to be having ability to monitor it without leaving OneNote. So that's how action points can be captured in OneNote and integrated with. Now on the mobile side, there is this feature doesn't exist, but on the mobile side, there is one more feature when you go to email. Email can be converted to task on mobile, but on the mobile OneNote version, you can't right click on some sentence you have written and convert it to task. So that's another thing you may want to do after you come back to your desktop and that page syncs from OneNote. All right, so that's about taking notes. Let's go further. Are there any questions which require my attention right now? No, nothing right now. Another very, very relevant and useful feature which is absolutely unknown is managing scan documents like many of you were talking about. I think uh, Santosh was talking about. He has notes, but they are in the form of. Image or you have scanned documents. All of us have scanned documents, legal documents, MOUs, agreements after finalization and everyone signs it. They are scanned and then put in an archive. Now if it's a 300 page document and there is a dispute and I want to look for a phrase or search for a word. The only method available to humanity is scroll, 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 which basically means what I am using hands, brain is doing nothing. Repetitive. I am struggling, so inefficient. So this is a brilliant feature. You go to file. Right now, for demo purpose, I'm showing you a PDF, but any application which has a print option will work. So I go to file and sorry. And in the file, what do I do? I go to print. You don't need a printer attached. Why am I clicking in the wrong place? So file print. In print, what do I do? You have to search for a printer. Now, depending on which version of OneNote you have, you will find one or more printers here. If you have desktop and Windows 10, either of them will do. In my case, it's showing OneNote desktop, but in your case, it may show OneNote 2007, 10, 13, whatever. Any OneNote will do. So the moment you do that, it is going to print these pages to OneNote. Print means what? It'll add a page to OneNote and just put those images. So it looks something like this. So the same document, which had few pages in it, has landed up here in my OneNote. Three pages were there. Three pages are whatever available here also. Now the problem is this is still an image. What is the point in having that? No point. But there is a point because OneNote has a beautiful search feature. Now remember, if you click here, it is going to search across pages. But if you press Control F, which is the find key, then by default it searches on the page. There is nothing on the page. There are two pictures, but don't worry. Now I'm typing the word P-A-R, I. So notice what is done. I have not even typed the full word. It Looking at all the words which start with PA, it has counted them and saying, OK, you want to see the next word? Don't waste time scrolling. You ask me next match is F3. 
previous match is shift F3. So you can actually jump across hundreds of pages in an informed manner and search more efficiently. Very, very easy and effective. And while we are at it, maybe this agreement was signed and this text of the agreement came from the other party's lawyer. And then you realize that I have a similar requirement where I have to sign a similar agreement with my customer, but I don't have the text. So I may have to give some money to another lawyer or I can right click because I know right click means whatever needs I may have and I have noticed the need now. Microsoft have must must have noticed it long back and they must have given us a solution. Two options actually because it can be a multi page printout. So if it was a 300 page document and you wanted all text, imagine right clicking 300 times. That's why copy text from all pages. Now nothing seems to have happened, but it has because it has picked up all the recognized text and put it in clipboard. So now if I go and paste it, I'm going to paste it as text. Notice quite a bit of stuff is there. Some mistakes will happen depending on the scan quality, but it is absolutely better and more efficient than typing it all over again manually. So that's OCR. That's not all. All of us, at least during mobile or when travel was allowed, a lot of expenses and bills we had to enter into some system. So one of the other things is images. What if you have images and um, something like this? Let me see. I have a receipt like this. This is the receipt. And I want to do data and train an expense software from here. What do I do? Right click. Now, th this is a picture, so there's only one option. Then I put a new page and I put it there. And I have everything. So, this is also very useful. So that's about OCR. Now it also has a calculator. Why does it have a calculator? Because OneNote is really, really good for students as well. Many students don't even know about the existence of OneNote, but students can use OneNote extremely effectively. For example, each subject becomes a notebook and each subtopic or chapter or lecture becomes and then studies become here research comes here as additional pages. Now remember in case of students, they study in groups. So it is possible that one of us is attending physics lectures and another person is attending chemistry lectures and then they share their notes with each other. That is the situation where this can be brilliant. You create a team in teams. When you create a team in teams, one note notebook is automatically created by the way. So before we go into understanding these group scenarios, let me show you how this works inside of teams. When you create a team in teams. By default, it has one section that's called a general section. And by default, you have two tabs. One is called posts and one is called files. You can always create more channels. And whenever I add a new channel, what happens? It will again have three tabs by default. Posts, files and wiki. If you don't like wiki, you can remove it. If you don't want it ever to come, you can remove it from the base template. But this is where you can add anything else you want. So if I'm doing group study with other students, or I'm working on a project with other colleagues. I create a team, add the team members to this by saying manage team and add members. These can be external parties. And now I click on this and I want a shared place for taking notes. So one note amongst all other products of Microsoft can be added here. Now when I say one note is added, where is that notebook? I have never gone to my notebook and say create a notebook for this project called Excel in Finance. Don't worry, just choose one note. And then what happens? It will actually try to create a tab in that channel for notebook, but it's not. Don't do this. This is a common mistake people do. Read that carefully. Don't create a new notebook. Whenever you create a team behind the scenes automatically 
a notebook is already created. You just have to use it. So this is the notebook. You create a new section and that section will get mapped to the new tab which you have created. For example, I am creating. Whatever it is. So now you say save. Having done that, what happens? The tab will render a web version of OneNote in that thing. Now once it is done, everyone has access to it and everyone can take notes. Everyone can take notes on the same page at the same time. That is literally like being on the same page during a meeting. Now one word of caution. When you are attending a team's meeting on the right side, you also see another thing which is called meeting notes. Let me just show you that just to clarify and differentiate because many people currently get confused with that one. And that is different and that has nothing to do with one note. That's why I'm explicitly showing you here. So if you go to. A meeting and during a meeting you click on these three dots, you see meeting notes. You will see a pane appearing here. That's different. That is not one note. These are meeting specific notes. Why are they there when one note is already there? Because we do so many meetings. For every meeting, we are not going to create a one note notebook. But I want the notes to be shared. Now, in order to do that, I would have to create so many notebooks and keep on sharing them with all kinds of people because every meeting has different attendees. To solve the problem, this is a mini version of one note where you will not see it in one note list. But when you go to that meeting chat, those shared notes will remain. So these are different. What I'm showing you here is for structured collaboration in a project. I want shared notes and notice this is on browser. Actually, it's rendering in the browser inside teams. It doesn't matter. I can open it on browser, but if I want it offline, there is one extra step to be done because these I created in teams. This notebook is lying in teams. It is not yet synced to my local desktop. So what do I do? I choose open in desktop app and when I do that. One time it will give me a security warning because it's coming from browser really, and then it will sync to my local machine and then I can use it offline as well. That's how you use shared notebooks within teams. All the features which I've talked about are same. It's just one note rendering inside. All right, that's that. Now let's go further. Any questions I need to address right now? Nothing right now. All right. Now, if you do have a stylus, and nowadays many laptops by default are coming with touch, and third party stylus styli are very cheap. So it's a good idea to try OneNote with stylus. Why? Because it will liberate you. It has amazing features if you have stylus in hand. Now, OCR of course happens, but let me just show you what happens out of the box first and then we will explore in detail what happens later. So I was talking about notes. These are examples of notes I have taken using scribbling with just finger, just my finger on the note on mobile. Now they got synced. Now this is really badly written. Can I convert this to text? So yes, the answer is yes. You go to the draw tab. Don't select it like this. It won't get selected like this. This is a bad idea. Don't select it in pieces. You go to this, this lasso select under draw tab. Now when you select it like this, what happens? It selects it and then under draw you will see ink to text and see what happens. Of course, it did not understand the word did it understand properly? Let's see. What had I written earlier? On not notes written using a finger. Look at the way I have written F. It's really bad, but it still understood that. So it's really, really useful. Having said that, I don't want to convert it to text, but I still want it to be searchable. So let's see. Control F and I'm saying N. Notice it did find N. Not only that, the same way as before, all words starting with N. So it's your choice whether you want to retain his handwriting, it's searchable or convert it to text. So that's 
About how many questions do we have pending just to get an idea? We have around 16 to 17. All right. Most so of the short answers, some, some might some take might. a little time. All right. Now, when you're writing notes on a notepad uh, on a laptop, what happens is when you try writing something like this, uh, we, we don't really write it horizontally. So what do we do then? So in the home tab or depending on which version of this you are using in view menu, actually in both cases, you have rule lines. So you can have rule lines. These are not printable. You can remove them. It's just on off and then try to take notes. Now this is really a thick pen. Let me also show you what are the pens available. Lots of pens are available. You should use a thin enough pen and OCR is better. For demo purpose, use a thick pen or for illustration, use a thick pen. Many people use shared one note as a whiteboard. It works beautifully and you don't have to install a separate whiteboard application. If two people were sharing this, multiple people can simultaneously draw and type and it'll all get merged. But then if it's a shared notebook, everyone can do anything. Yes. And then what happens if there is a dispute? I wrote something, someone deleted it. That can be a really dangerous thing. Obviously, Microsoft has thought of it. So let us see an example of what happens if the multiple people edit the same thing. Now what is going to happen there? I wrote something, someone else did it. I, I, I won't even know about it. So first of all, OneNote has a history tab and there is a recycle bin. So you can, this is independent of Windows and OneDrive and SharePoint. So this 90 days, I think it stays there, but that's not important. What happens is because it's a shared notebook, a bigger problem you have is because there are multiple notebooks which are shared. If someone else has changed something, how will you know where to go? So that is the first point. So any name which is bold, that means there are unread changes there. Now if I go to a place which has unread changes and then I want to know where are the changes. There are so many pages, so many sections, you will get lost. Then what do I do? Oh. What do I do? Next unread and previous unread. So it has kept track of which changes. You can quickly go next, 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 and then it'll automatically mark it as read. Like that, you can quickly get up to speed in a shared notebook scenario as to what you have not noticed yet. So that's one part of the sharing. The other part of sharing is if I have a page which has been edited, edited, edited multiple times, and then I want to figure out what happened to it. How do I manage? How do I understand what happened? So typically what happens is, suppose I have a page like this. So many people have come and gone. You have version history here. So when I go to this, notice what happens in the version history. It is saying that originally it was like this. Then someone came and changed something and so on and so forth. So it is actually giving you versioning at page and object level. There is nothing to do with Windows. It's built in. So you have all the things which you need to understand who did what. So don't worry about shared notebooks. They are very well managed. Now having said that, what else can we do? This is specific to calculations and math. So let's talk about the calculator part and then probably we'll finish and then take questions because we have 15 plus questions to handle. So calculations, anything you want to calculate, just type the mathematical expression and press. So suppose type the mathematical expression equal to space bar. So complex things also work. It understands scientific things as well. No function. This is not Excel. Factorial also it understands common functions. 
also it understands. But that's not all for students and people in maths. There are some beautiful features which are available only on the Windows 10 version. So what do you do? So I'm just trying to type an equation. Something like this. I make a mistake. Of course, I can write this. Now this obviously is not going to do anything. But now I go to lasso. And then there is a match button. It says OK, there's an equation. You want to convert it to proper math. You can do that or you can fix it if there are some problem or you can actually solve for Y. And it actually shows you the steps using whatever method you use. And now it is actually showing you how it solved that equation. If this was not enough, it says you like it based on this kind of equations. Do you want some practice? Let me create a quiz for you. So this creates a math quiz by integrating with forms. So now it is going to Microsoft Forms using my account. It created the form, created the equations, convert it into a multiple choice question. Talk if you're speaking, there is no audio. So. I'll repeat it created a form automatically with similar type of equations and give you practice depending on which equation this was, which kind of equation it was, it will create relevant quiz. So it's very, very useful for this. Now other things we can do with one note, we can go on and on, but let me just see if I have missed any critical feature. Otherwise, I'm going to summarize and we will go further. And take questions. Now OneNote also has sticky notes feature, but I suggest don't use it because that doesn't synchronize with base OneNote. It synchronizes with the sticky note app of Windows 10. Although it looks beautiful and all that, syncing to native one note itself is difficult. So, bottom line, install one note on desktop, mobile, and all other devices. Make sure you create a couple of notebooks on OneDrive. Make sure they sync on all devices, and then you are ready to go. With that, I think we will summarize and finish, and then take questions. Shesham, you want to put the feedback form and talk about that? Yes, uh, we shall share the link of the feedback form in the Q&A panel. Please do click on the link and share your feedback about the session. Thank you. OK, now. The next event I will just mention and then we will go into question and answer. So the next event is on 15th May. Saturday 3 PM same time. And it is about using lists. It's a highly ignored product like OneNote. It is there for 15 years. Nobody uses it. And even today we struggle to capture data from multiple people using Excel. That can be completely eliminated by using lists. You can create a structured method of data entry with full security so that even if multiple people are entering the data, they can't see each other's data. And you will get a live Power BI or pivot table report which gets auto refreshed. This can transform the way in which you capture data across the organization. So that's on 15th. So with that, let's take questions.
the first question is from santosh nair which you have taken a reference to multiple times but you never gave the solution he says that he uses a pencil on the ipad and the data is stored as an image unlike other tools that converts it writing into text like how you showed is it possible to activate that on one note on ipad if not is this feature expected in the near future so on one note on ipad if you are doing inking to my knowledge it should be stored as ink not image now having said that if it is stored as image you can still sync that page to desktop and click on that and see is it doing ocr it should work and another thing on office right see as office app on let me i'm just checking something Hold on. Yeah, there is an image to text option on mobile versions of Word and OneNote. Try that as well. So one of them should work. Next question is Nimesh, where he asks, is the meeting notes linked to Windows 10 app? He has the desktop version, but meetings are not linked. So meeting notes are to my knowledge on desktop app, not Windows 10 app. But I will check on that. Because when you say right click take notes in calendar, so problem there is you may have both versions installed. But when I go to calendar and I'm asking the calendar to link my meeting to OneNote, at that point, it has to choose one of the OneNote applications, either the desktop version or the Windows 10 version. It can't ask you both. So how does that get decided? You go to default apps. So you go to settings, default apps. Let me try to show you that. Same thing may happen when you're trying to sync a browser based notebook from Teams to local notebook. It may open it in the wrong app. That happens because when you go to default apps, you may have the other version of OneNote mapped here. So if you want to try it out in Windows 10 app, where the right click on meeting works, first go to default apps, make sure in the default app, Windows 10 app is mapped as the default and then you will get the answer. So here there are file types. The file type of OneNote is called .one. So when you go to dot one here or whatever one of those you will see one note mentioned here. Now when you go here it will allow you to choose this is desktop. This is Windows 10. So change the default and try it out. And just to complete the topic Santosh I can have a call separately with you where you can share your iPad version and we'll figure it out. All right next. Next, uh, how to find meeting details or calendar after a couple of months? So all the features of search of Outlook are available to you. So when you click in calendar and go to search, you will get a search bar which nobody notices typically. So please notice it. It's only available when your cursor is in search and nowadays the search has gone to the top and this drop down may interfere. So this is the practical way to do it. Click on search. There will be a drop down. Don't type anything there. Just get rid of the drop down by clicking on this area outside. Now it will ask you. Do you remember? Who was the organizer or did it have a collateral or maybe you are searching in the subject or body? So put some things here and then put the search criteria. Then you will see the list. Of course, there are many more search criteria available in this drop down. All this. Maybe you want, uh, you don't remember exactly when it happened. So there are many different things here. So you choose whichever you want. Let's say modified organizer, red, whatever. And then the relevant items will appear here. So visit having attachment or not, the drop down will appear here and so on. So give as many filter conditions as possible, then it will be faster with lesser results. And the same concept applies not just to 
not just through searching in calendar, but everywhere in Outlook, all folders. Next. Manikandan is asking, can we have two accounts and work simultaneously, one for personal and one for official? Absolutely. You can have multiple corporate accounts also mapped to one note. So you go to file. You go to account and you can keep adding as many accounts as you want. This is personal. This is corporate. Multiple. Maybe you are a part of an external you are a vendor to another customer. All those can be done. Next, Amit is asking, can I also link it to Outlook emails? Yes, absolutely. You can link it to Outlook emails. Whatever you need is there. Just remember that. So if I am in an email and I want to put it as a part of a notebook because it's relevant to that topic, what do you think you can do? So you go to your mail, assume this was the mail, right click on it. Needless to say, there is sent to one note. Same way, if the add in is installed, generally the add in is installed, but let me show that to you as well. Anything, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, generally there is a send to one note button. Send to one note button. So there is an add in for that. Just check if you have enabled the add in. One note. Notes about Word document, and this gives you a absolutely brilliant feature. Let me see if I can demonstrate that feature as a part of this. So let's take uh, one document. I have opened the document, and uh, whatever. Now I want to take notes about this document. I want to take notes about this document. So I go to OneNote. This is only desktop, desktop version, not Windows 10 version. Now what happens here? There is in view tab a very, very ignored feature called dock to desktop. When I click on that, what happens? This whole window shrinks and it goes on this side of the desktop. I'll try to show it to you by bringing it to this desktop if possible. Where did it go? So this is called dock to desktop and this window actually is looking at what else is open on the desktop and then you scroll in the word document and take notes. What will happen right now? I'm actually trying to do that. The other window for some reason I'm not going to not being able to get on this monitor. It doesn't matter, but now I have clicked here and I'm taking notes. So in the notes I have just said yes. And it gives you a dialogue like this, which says link notes are running now. OK, so what happens? So I have written this. Now maybe I had some PPT open. And then in that PPT, I had a particular slide open. Let's say I had this slide one note. And now I'm going to that slide. And now I'm taking notes and saying, I just wrote beautiful slide, something like that. Now these notes actually get linked automatically. For example, now I wrote the word nice when word was active. Notice in the tooltip it is actually showing me the document which was open. But now I have taken notes and I have closed the document. I am seeing those notes afterwards. Now what happens? I click on this as long as the document is accessible that document will actually open for you and it will move the cursor to exactly the point where that thing was. So that is the beauty of linked notes. This works with Word, PowerPoint, not Excel, not PDF. OK, next. Next question is, can we convert pen written notes to Word through an OCR, which you have shown? Yes, which I have shown. And the more you use it, it uh, uses AI to learn better. So with time, the accuracy improves. Next was they wanted to check how to do how to best use OneNote for your daily to-do list. 
don't use one note. To do means you have to do it. No, there is a deadline. So anything which has a deadline goes to task folder. Task folder is the most important part because without deadline, adding a task is like not doing it at all. So don't waste time in one note. One note checklist is useful for a completely different reason. It is for creating standard operating procedures. For example, I have one note and I have a particular process to follow. Let's say I'm doing recruitment. So for recruitment, I have to for every candidate. I have to do some background check. Then I have to send offer letter. Whatever like that. So I have a list of things to save time. I'm just typing this checklist. Now I make it into a checklist, but this is one checklist. Next candidate comes for new page. I don't want to copy paste this checklist. So you go to insert. You go to page templates. First time you go, this will open. There you can add this to my templates. So now I'm going to say save current page as a template and I'm giving it a name called recruitment. Done. Now I am on any other page and I want the recruitment checklist. What do I do? Again, go to page templates, my templates, recruitment. This will come automatically. Now, of course, I don't want to do that again and again. Next time onwards in the drop down, it will appear and now I can get. Now, if I'm I have created a separate notebook for recruitment. Every time adding a new page is going to give me blank page and then I have to manually select this. No, if I go here, I can also say choose my recruitment list as the default template for this particular page. So every time I add a new page, that checklist comes automatically. So that's the purpose of checklist for tasks. Choose Outlook and Outlook tasks unfortunately are not visible. They are not visible where they are not visible on. On. Outlook tasks are not visible on the mobile phone. That's why on the mobile to see and manage and monitor tasks. You have to install the to do app. So in to do app, my work comes from Outlook task list and flag emails. Teamwork comes from planner assigned to me. OK, next. Next, Sanjay is asking, can you please give some insight on recording an online teams meeting with audio of all participants, which is the normal recording? Yeah, that's the normal recording. That's the only way in fact. So if you go to teams meeting and say record by default, it is going to record everything. But there is one more thing which has happened, which may not have reflected into your teams app. It is under rollout, I think. But one more thing is going to happen just to answer his question. All that you have to do is start recording. Only presenters and um, organizer has the rights to do that. If you are a presenter outside the org, you can't do that. Now the recording will automatically happen and it will automatically get uploaded to stream. And if you set the language in one of those six or seven languages, it will also get transcribed. So it's a no brainer, no extra effort. Having said that transcript is a lengthy process right now. What is the process? The recording happens after the recording happens. Someone has to go there and enable this language, then download that file. But now a new feature is coming which will appear in this menu itself where it says enable transcript, not live captions. Live captions mean whatever people are saying it will show and it will keep getting scrolled, but you can't save it. So a persistent version of live captions is called transcript. In fact, nowadays it understands how who is speaking. Earlier transcript was just converting people's voice to text, but now it prefixes that with person name. So in reality, it is already a transcript. It is not getting saved. So turn on live captions with saving is transcript. Will come soon. Next. Next question is UJ who asks, how do I place pics side to side side by side and add text to it? Every time I try to place it, it comes one below the other. Yeah, so pictures are not very beautifully handled. There are no picture manipulation tools in it. So if I put a picture. 
basically everything in one note is an object. Remember that. So this is a picture. Now let me take another picture. Let's take another picture. So I'm just taking a screenshot. Now you can't do much here, right? You'll have to place outside and then this is a completely separate object and you click on it and then you figure out. That's all. You'll notice that unlike all other applications in Office, there is no picture toolbar here. So picture handling is poor, but having said that, I can do copy text and it should give me. Next. How do I embed fonts? Because new added fonts in desktop are not supported in mobile or web mode, as I use specific fonts for ease like headers, subheaders, etc. So that's a word question. Anyway, let me just complete this. There's one more feature here which may help it. In many cases, when we are taking notes, I have already written something. So I'm saying some feature and then I want to write benefits. Then it becomes like a table. Now, after having written something, you can't add a table, but you can in one note. So after having written something, press tab, it becomes a table. One more tab, one more tab. You decide how many columns do you want? Whatever you think, add a couple of more. Then to finalize the table columns, press enter. Now the same tab will work as tab and shift tab. But then the thought is, can I put this picture inside that cell? and maybe I can manipulate it better. Sorry, that is a feature of word. So if you want precise control and alignment of pictures with respect to each other, create a word table. Don't put any borders, then you will get complete control over managing multiple objects in a predetermined and uh, precise manner. Having said that, what was the next question? I forgot. He uses specific headings. fonts. Uh -huh. Yes, with headings, headings. and subheadings. So, so there are headings available in OneNote, but you cannot change the formatting of headings. That means there are no customizable styles in OneNote. So I'm assuming that question pertains to Word or PowerPoint or Excel. Because it says headings, probably it is Word, but headings are available in Excel as well. So if you have used custom fonts for headings, that is possible, you modify change the font, make sure you do it for the template so that next time onwards you don't have to do it again. Do that for all nine fonts, choose the color scheme, done. The problem is those fonts are not going to render, forget about your device. They will not render for anybody because they may not have the fonts. So the solution for any font related problem is here. File options, this applies to Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Go to save and embed fonts in file. Now, if you want that file to be editable by the other party, then you have to embed, embed all characters in that font. If you want that file to be visible but not editable, then embed only characters in the document. This reduces the file size but prevents editing on the other side. If you have a custom font for which you have paid, the other party does not need the license because that font is only editable within that document. They can't use it elsewhere. So there's no licensing issue for fonts. This is also a common mistake people do for PowerPoint and they go to a conference and someone else's laptop it is and then running from someone else's meeting. This is a problem solved. Next. How do I set a margin of something like A4 or A3 size for printouts or to align the content? In OneNote, in, in OneNote, note. there are templates available. Uh, so go to templates and figure it out. But OneNote is free form. Unlike Word, it will allow you to do anything you want. It's just a starting point. So in fact, if you go to OneNote templates, there are many ready-made templates. For example, in business, let's say this is a formal meeting, informal meeting. So notice it has some predefined semblance of margins it has some predefined objects, but everything is still free form. It's just a starting point. It's not a word processor. If you want margins and layout and headers, footers, use word. 
that if you have something in one note, you can export it to Word and then do whatever is missing in one note. Yeah, sorry. Good. Next question is that he says he's been using OneNote since 2012 when the size of OneNote file keeps growing. Is there a way to archive as three to four years back of data is not required, but I need it in some cases to refer? So OneNote size does grow because it accepts everything and the disk, uh, disk space it occupies also can become significant. So one of the things you have to immediately go and do is go to save and backup and by default it keeps two backups which is really an overkill make it zero especially because your file is already on one drive that's a backup so remove the backups that takes and second thing there is a percentage space used for optimizing you can reduce this optimize files after inactivity this and if you really want to do that because you may not have opened some old files so this has never happened optimize files now this should reduce or improve performance and reduce the physically occupied file size. Next, Tejas is asking, can we create meeting notes from Google Calendar? No. Santosh is asking, how can I find all notes across all my tasks assigned to me via planner, etc., irrespective of source? That would be the to do app. No, to do app will give me all my tasks. It will not give me notes. No, he so wants I, tasks. Yeah, so if you have not converted tasks from Outlook to, uh, sorry, one note to task, then in Outlook, of course, you can search. So what happens is in one note, suppose you have tasks and you have not linked them to Outlook, then you can't use to do app because Outlook tasks are going to go into to do app, not things which are mentioned in one note. Now the fact that if you have put in one note, that means you have never right clicked and put it here. Most probably you have done this. If that is the case, absolutely. You have find tags option and then it will go through all kinds of tags and give you all of them. Not only that, for checkboxes, items which are already done, you don't want. So you can filter that list by saying show only unchecked items and that will reduce it further. And this can be at whatever level of granularity you want. This is the way to get comprehensive search across. So one of the things here is students are taking notes and while taking notes, they say, oh, this question is likely to come. So what do you do? You go to these. These are called tags. I didn't cover them. There are some default ones, but you should create. So I can create a custom tag. For example, I create a custom tag here. So I'm saying, a new custom tag I'm creating or likely question. I'll just call it LQ. I can put a symbol for it also. Use a symbol which is different. Now what happens? This becomes, this goes on top and it first in nine get shortcuts, which is very convenient. Another example in business context, I'm an auditor. I am wanting to put audit findings. No problem. I created another tag and uh, I am putting it this particular icon. So now control one is audit finding and control two is likely question. So now just before the exam, I want to search for all likely questions or all audit findings. I can use this. It's a very comprehensive search and if you want, it will put all these as a summary page if you want to track it further. So everything you want is there. Just figure it out. Use it. Next. Kiran is asking, can we connect tasks with planner? Will it be helpful? Uh, Outlook tasks cannot be connected to planner because planner by definition is for our tasks. Outlook is for my tasks. So my tasks should be managed in Outlook. Group tasks are done in planner. A combination of both the tasks can be seen in one place, which is to do and to do is not just available as a mobile app. It's also available as a browser page if you want. So if you go to Office 365, you will see to do as a separate app as well. So if you go to to do here, it will give me all my Outlook tasks as well as planner tasks together. 
including the ones which are assigned to me. So to do is the aggregator. In fact, MS project tasks are also going, which are assigned to you are very soon going to appear here. To do is the task aggregator across Microsoft platform. Having said that, you can also integrate using Power Automate where you have some line of business activities happening, some database trigger happening, and you want a task to be assigned in planner or teams. That's also possible using Power Automate. OK, we are five minutes. Over I'm going to. How many questions pending? Uh, there are a few. So many of them are just parts. There are only three. Yeah, yeah, there's just the three or four. All right, so let's finish this. If you are in a hurry to go, please leave. This will be a part of the recording as well. So thank you for joining. It was a pleasure. Next question. Can I get notes if I deleted it from one note by mistake? Yeah, as I said, there is a one note. Recycle bin. So 60 days I think it keeps and then physically deletes. OK. Next one is uh, another Mac OS. OneNote for Mac OS is different than the Windows versions. Many of the features options are not available for Mac OS users, even on the desktop app. Is there possibility mm -hmm. of an up? Yeah, some parity has been improved, but there are some features which are not available. You just have to wait for Microsoft. Go to user voice. I'm sure someone has already requested upvote it. So chances of Microsoft taking it up increases. That's all I can. I don't have control over their prioritization. The only way to do it as upvote in user voice. So you go to userwise.com, choose OneNote, choose Mac and search for whatever feature you wanted. Most probably people have already put it there. They must have voted for it. Increase the votes by voting and ask your friends also to vote. Next, Santosh is asking, can I retain both the image and the converted text at the same time in the page? Yeah, you just copy and right click and convert. Okay. Sh if it's is an asking, image, wait, wait, sorry. If it's yeah. an image, yes, absolutely. By default, it is like that. I just showed you, right? Where, what did I do just now? I put an yeah. image somewhere and I right clicked and put the text. The image is not disturbed. If it is yeah. handwriting, then it's ink. If it is noticed as ink, then only the ink disappears and gets converted to text. If it is image, image will remain. Next yeah. question, Sharat is asking, can I import export a particular notebook section or page? Yes, you can. So file export gives you all those or file share also gives you all those. Share is the entire notebook. You can't do partially. From security point of view, technically, you can have a password at section level, but people who have tried to use it very soon get confused. It's the same thing like Excel passwords. Very soon you lose track of passwords and you have no clue what you have shared with whom. So if there is security, create a separate notebook. Having said that, exporting is possible to various formats. Now here itself page section or notebook. One common mistake people do is instead of page, they do this and a very large one note notebook may get created and confidential data may leak out. By the way, DLP works with one note as well. Next question is uh, Archana is asking that one note is linked to the outlook with your current official email ID. What about if one changes jobs and still wants to refer those notes or maybe continue using the same notebook with a new job? Can the person create a personal account on OneNote and keep on adding and linking official email IDs? I think your IT will not allow that. Technically possible, but most companies will block that. Next is uh, Sushain is asking, I have Windows 10 version. Should I install the desktop or the Windows version will suffice? Uh, some of the features I talked about are only available on desktop, specifically the audio linking or I. I think you should go for the Windows 10 version as of today because further development on desktop version has stopped. OK, uh, again, that version is very often installed by default. Just check it out. 
another question is are the windows 10 one note or desktop one one note which synchronizes both so in my case i have uh, all my notebooks on one drive and on my desktop i have the desktop version as well as the windows 10 version both will sync i can open the same notebook in both in fact if i open the same notebook on two different apps on the same desktop i write something it syncs live there almost live both will sync next is is it possible to cut and paste pages from one notebook to another notebook yeah yeah absolutely so not just copy paste pages right click anywhere this is a page this is a paragraph this is a whole object wherever you right click there is copy and for pages and sections there is also move or copy where you can not only move or copy to another notebook or section you can also merge into another section and there is another very beautiful option here for example this part of calculation i want to refer to in another note somewhere in a completely different notebook i don't want to copy paste so right click on any object and don't say regular copy in fact because i have not selected anything regular copy is disabled if i select i have this copy but i have another one called copy link to paragraph now i am going to a completely different place and here i am saying paste now notice there is no other option so when i paste what is this this will take me to that so you can very nicely create a cross reference many people use it for knowledge management help files referencing policy documents with each other and so on next question is is it possible to uh, sorry can i share and collaborate one note with people not in the o365 email id like a gmail or something else sorry sorry again can i share and collaborate one note notes with people not using o365 mail id like a gmail or something else yes absolutely so if i go to file and share so let me actually show you that if i go to file share it will ask you whom do you want to share it with or you can get a sharing link like this view link or edit link now if i create an edit link and send it to someone they may not have one note but they can still edit it on browser next question is can i integrate the ocr kind of capability of one note to other contract life cycle management like aptus where in the platform search area we integrate the capability of one note ah uh, yes technically possible but then it's a work uh, roundabout way of doing it basically what you are doing is windows os or uh, one note ocr is using built in ocr which is in one note but a much more sophisticated version of ocr is available directly for programming using azure cognitive services so directly use azure cognitive services api as a part of your solution that gives you much better control and performance uh next is an email uh, email and excel so i'll skip that in our uh, teams calendar window i do not see one note when i right click how do i add it sorry in our in teams, teams calendar window i do not see one note when i right click no. how do i add it in teams calendar one note will not be visible right click is available in outlook calendar how can i link one note with my old note old notes where wherever they are just put them in one note they may be word documents you can insert word documents in one note or they are physical pages put the photographs there whatever it is put them next when sharing one note with another person i put a can i put a lock on the data on what is there in that which cannot be edited by them doc doc you are on mute you can by creating an edit only link a view only link but true mip or irm is not available that's only for word excel powerpoint and emails no more questions all right so 
Thank you for your patience. We still have 48 people. I'm sure they benefited. The recording will be given to you very soon. Make sure you practice it, teach it to more people and share the recording and spread the word. So that's it from me. Thanks Zias and Shesham for your help and see you next time on 15th May to understand how to capture data using lists.